What's up, you guys? What's up, Divas and Diva? So it's your girl April back with another video. Honestly, was not expecting to do this, but I did ask some questions on Instagram. Should I do a tutorial? And I wanted to share this with you guys. In my spare time, I do like to do arts and crafts. I do like to do decor. I like to spruce up my house. And a lot of things I do refurbish, I remake, I make by hand you know, Dollar Tree, things that I have around my house. I do come up with some crafty, nifty ideas. I wanted to make a face shield just for my grandkids and also just for myself. And I decided to make one on Easter Sunday. Basically, I was winging it as I went along using just things that I had in my house so I did not have to leave my home. What I'm suggesting to you guys is look around your home and see what you can find to use. One thing that you're definitely going to need is a plastic sheet. I've seen a lot of people using two liter soda bottles, which is really unique. It's different. You don't have to go out and buy anything. If you got soda in your home, you can definitely rinse it out and wash it. But just keep in mind, it's things that you have around your house. Initially, I definitely was gonna use a two liter soda bottle. And I also realized when I was about to use the two liter bottle of soda, that I have something that is very similar to it without having to do so much work. And it'll also make it a little stylish. And also use the bags that your comforter set will come in. The plastic that the comforter sets are stored in or packaged in is really kind of thick. And these will also make really great usage for a face shield. It doesn't have to be so thick, but it has to be thick enough to where you can shape and mold it and it will help protect your face. And this is the item that I made using things around my home. So this is my face shield and I used jewelry and headbands and I made this one. This is just the demo, the prototype, and you can definitely make it a little bit better than this, but this just keeps it stretching and it also is very adjustable and you don't have to mess up your hair. Probably took me a couple hours just because basically, like I said, I was kind of going along and just adding different things. This is in no way, shape, or form to say to not wear a mask because it's still very crucial and important to also wear a mask. But it gives you an extra sense of protection, which a lot of us do need. And me, for one, I like the extra sense of protection. It does have a foam inside. And as you can see right here, it also has some black duct tape. And this is because there is a cushion in here. However, if you're wearing makeup or you're sweating, you really don't want the cushion to absorb any of your makeup, your facial products, or your sweat. For the plastic of my actual face mask, I did purchase these um, 12 by 12 inches transparent gel lighting papers. These are gel lighting filters, and I purchased these from Amazon. I did get eight of these. They were $12. They are 12 by 12 inches in length. These are basically to change colors of your lighting when you're doing videos. I really wasn't a huge fan of them, so they just sat, and I have them in every color, and they're very sturdy, and they'll definitely work. But like I said, if you have like a comforter bag or a two liter bottle, you can also use that as well. So for this particular video, I'm going to choose like a lighter color. So these are the items that you're going to need for this particular mask. As you guys see here, I have the following items, which I will explain to you right now. You will need a pair of scissors, some duct tape, some headbands, a plastic sheet, a hole puncher if you do not have a sewing machine. You'll definitely need a ruler, some type of elastic, and some old jewelry or ribbon that you have laying around your house. Along with that, you'll also need some glue sticks and a glue gun. Yeah, you'll definitely need those things. So this is the mask that I made using the following items. I also used my sewing machine, but keep in mind, I will be showing you a version where you will not need to use a sewing machine in case you don't have one. So you guys, this is the jewelry that I used that I had laying around my home. Along with that, a headband that I got from my local Dollar Tree. I had a bunch of them. So, you know, I just have these things laying around my house. And here we go. So the first thing that we have here is the plastic sheet. You can either use a two liter soda bottle or you can order the ones like I purchased from Amazon, which I didn't get to use. You also need some really good, good glue sticks. I'm not gonna say the Dollar Tree is not that great, but I just prefer good glue sticks. The ruler, which you will need in case your mask or your sheet is too long, you want to make it to where it fits properly because it is 12 by 12 inches. So it was a little bit too long for me. So I cut it to 10 inches. 
The ribbon will be used for the trimming just to make it look fancy, but if you don't have these things, don't worry. They're not really necessary. You're definitely gonna need these scissors. This is just an old piece of elastic that I had. Just showing you guys that you really don't have to use a headband. You can use fabric that you also have around your home, or you can also use these headbands that you get in like a three to four pack. These are a little bit tighter, so with these, you'll definitely have to cut them open and just find some old jewelry around your homes. I'm going to be using this for my trimming, but I'm going to be removing the accessories off of it. So uh, let's begin. You're also going to need a piece of foam if you have one of the wet noodles, or if you have any type of sponge or piece of foam, you're also going to be needing to use that. I'm gonna be using this piece of foam that I have here, which was from a package of wigs, wig packaging. You know, they can just keep them to mold the wigs. So I'm gonna be using this piece of foam. You do not need it to be directly around the entire perimeter of the head. So you just want it to be basically in the middle of your forehead. So I'm going to just put a line on the foam of where I want to cut at. And then I'm gonna go ahead and remove the excess sponge. And then I'm also going to cut it a little bit thinner across because you don't need it to be that wide. And then I'm going to take my hot glue gun and I'm just going to put some of that onto the sponge. Please do not put too much. Try to put it in the middle because if you put it by the edges, it will spill over. So just take your sponge and put it right at the trimming of the plastic. You don't wanna put it directly up against it to the edge, but just try to leave a little bit of space. And then you're gonna take your duct tape and I would prefer duct tape. Don't use like the clear packaging tape because it doesn't stick really good. This is just duct tape. This is the Gorilla Brand Tuck Tape. And you want to just tape that just down a little bit below the sponge. So that way you can take your fingers and put a crease in it. And then you wanna make sure that you just place it above the sponge and overlap that onto the plastic. Make sure you take your fingers and place a crease in the bottom half along with that along the sides, each of the sides. And then you wanna just take that tape and overlap it. If the tape is not wide enough, just put another piece on top of the trimming and just overlap it. Now this is the headband that I was talking about from the Dollar Tree where you can get three to four in a pack. It's a little bit tighter than some headbands. So if you do have these, you will need to cut it open so that way it doesn't pull or tug onto the plastic. And I will show you how to use this in the no sew version. But if you have a sewing machine, you just wanna line it up to where you have a little bit of overlapping and just sew it on. But these are just different uh, headbands that you can use. This one right here is the one I'm going to be using. It gives a lot of stretch. So this one I will not have to cut. And I'm just going to place it where I would want it to meet. So I'm going to take the end of the headband and I'm going to make sure that it meets where the tape is at on the actual sheet. I'm going to place that just below the tape so that way you do not see the tape on the outside of my headband. And I'm just gonna use some clips that I have from the Dollar Tree just to hold it steady. I don't really want to stick a pin in it um, only because just sticking a pin in it is a lot of work. And if you have any type of clips, just clip that on. Sometimes you don't need it if you have a sturdy hand. So as you guys see, I clip that over and the bottom portion of the headband is directly underneath the actual tape on the inside so you won't see the tape. Now I'm gonna take my sewing machine out and I have it on a tension of four, I have it on a width of two, and I have it in the middle um, bracket. This is thinner, um, this plastic is thin so you don't have to have a sturdy needle. This is just a standard size sewing machine. Needle, it's not for heavy duty because the plastic is pretty thin and the threading is normal threading. And I'm just gonna go ahead and lay the footer down right by the edges of the headband and I'm just going to slope forward and then I'm going to back stitch just to make sure that um, my threading doesn't unravel and I'm just going to go ahead and sew over the entire bottom perimeter of the headband and make sure you back stitch. This will not harm the plastic in any way and if you're concerned about the bottom brimming as where we have sewn at, no worries because we will be actually making that look a lot better. So before we even get to making that look better, like I said, it's a little bit too long because it is 12 inches. So I'm gonna take my ruler and I'm going to cut off two inches of the plastic. So I'm going to put a dot right here. And I've also went ahead and placed a dot on the opposite side. And I'm just gonna take my ruler to meet those two dots up and I'm just going to take a pen or marker I'm just going to trace across and then I'm going to cut that excess excess plastic off 
You don't have to cut it. It all depends on how tall you are and how long you want it. This was plenty of enough space for me, but you see the, uh, the ends are kind of sharp and jagged and straight. So I'm going to take a round item, any round item will do, and you just want to place it right at the bottom and just trace that curve into it. If you can do this by hand, then good for you. But I wanted a perfect circle, a perfect curve. So I just took something that was round like my tape and I just curved the bottom and just went ahead and cut those corners off. And this will give you the curved brim as you would see on like a sport tab. Now because the trimming or the bottom is a like, you know, plastic, I mean, you don't really have to do much from here, but if you want it to look a little fancy, you can take any type of ribbon or trimming that you can find. And I'm going to go ahead and basically destroy this old necklace that I had. I'm going to cut off the ends of it and I'm just going to use the actual trimming for my shield. So this is what I'm going to be lining the trimming of my shield with. Like I said, you can use whatever you have around your home. Please do not go outside if you don't need to, to purchase any of these items. These are just things that I found around my home. And I'm just going to move the accessories from this um, necklace so that I can use it as the trimming. Now I'm going to go ahead and place a small dot of my hot glue gun. You don't want to do too much and don't do a lot of hot glue because you know the stuff does spill over. And if you want to keep it as neat as possible, then I would not suggest using too much at a time. I just used a little bit and very sparingly, you know, this is good glue. Um, this is the uh, Gorilla Brand hot glue stick that I'm using. And the temperature of the hot glue gun is really high. But like I said, use what you have at home. And you just want to go along the sides and just continue trimming or hot gluing your item down or your trim down or your ribbon down, whatever. You know, you just want to take your hot glue gun and just go ahead and hot glue your ribbon or whatever trimming you're using. And you want to do this around the entire perimeter of the face shield. Now being that my uh, trim was a little bit short, I just went ahead and used my clip to tack that down so the glue can dry. And then I'm going to go ahead with the other end and I'm going to make sure that I put a little of that hot glue at the end of the trimming so that way it doesn't unravel. And then I'm just going to go ahead and stick down the other portion of that and continue hot gluing it down onto the side. And once you're at the end, make sure that you cut off the excess trim and hot glue that down as well. Now we're gonna go ahead and work on the base right here of where the headband is at. Now, as I stated, maybe you don't want the thread to show and it may look a little bit janky to you or you just wanna flavor it up or spice it up. You can go ahead and use any type of trim. I'm just showing you guys different examples of trims that I have on hand that you can use just to dazzle up. But for this particular video, I'm going to go ahead and use this white ribbon as a trim for across my headband. So I'm just going to do the same thing. I'm just going to take a little bit of my hot glue gun and I'm just going to place a little bit at the edge. And then I'm just going to go ahead and stick that down. And I'm going to also use a clip just to make sure that it holds it down in place while I'm working on just hot gluing the rest of the trim down. And you just want to repeat this until you get to the very end. So for my trimming, or not my trimming, but just to be dazzled up, I went ahead and I got one of my old necklaces that was kind of outdated. I wasn't going to wear it around my neck. So I decided I would put it on the neck, um, the headband, but you will need to sew this portion down. You cannot hot glue this because it will get stiff. So I'm going to take my curved needle and some thread, and I'm just going to sew in between the necklace of where the metal is at. So if you are going to be using a necklace, I would highly suggest that you use a thread and needle to attach it to your headband because using hot glue 
for the necklace may not be a good idea as my necklace is a little bit heavier and the hot glue would probably not hold as long and especially because it's metal against plastic it's not going to hold at all trust me i've tried this on something different not this but it will definitely not hold as long you'll probably get like a two day stick wear out of it so this is the reason why i'm going to just take my thread and needle and just sew in between as you see me doing here you don't have to sew the bottom you just need to sew the top part and i'm just taking the thread and i'm just putting it around my finger so that way it doesn't you know get stuck on any of the grooves in the necklace. So this is what it looks like. It's all sewn on and she is ready to be worn, but I'm gonna show you guys now how to make the face shield without a sewing machine. So you're gonna see here you have to have the same products except for you will need a hole puncher or something to make a nice little hole in so you're also going to need your sheet also just because we're going to be punching a hole in it I want to make the plastic a little bit more sturdier so you're going to take your duct tape now I'm going to take this piece of duct tape right here you don't need a big piece you just need two little squares or three little squares and you want to place that at the ends like so and make sure to overlap it. And then you wanna just take your hole puncher or anything you can make a nice hole in and you wanna put two holes on each end, right, like so. And the tape is just to make the plastic a little bit more sturdier. And this is the headband that I stated that you would need to cut open, but as I showed you guys, you can use any headband. So I also decided to put a hole in the middle just to make it look a little bit more sturdier. But unfortunately, I ran out of the black duct tape. The duct tape on the table, it was done. There wasn't any more left, so I had to use the packaging tape. But no worries, it still works just as well. So once I've made those holes, I'm going to take my same curved needle. And I'm going to start sewing through the holes onto the actual <laughs> fabric of the headband. And you want to make sure that you take your thread, as you see me doing right here, and just open it and take your needle and place it through the thread. So that way it makes a good knot and it holds sturdy. And you want to just go ahead and do a couple of stitches overlapping it and just placing the thread around your finger. So that way each time you pull it through, it will kind of like knot. So you want to just loop it around the thread. And then you just want to move over to the next hole and do the same thing once again. And at least sew each hole at least a good three times. The thread that I'm using is very thick thread. It's weaving hair thread. So it's the cotton thread. It's what I had on hand. But if you don't have this thread, no worries. You don't really need it. But if you have thinner thread, then I would highly suggest doing at least six times through each hole. Because thinner thread is thinner. And, you know, just you want to make sure that it's sturdy. But the thread that I'm using is thicker thread. And this is for your weaving hair so that's the reason why I only need to do it three times this is not the thread that I used on my sewing machine as this will definitely not work on a sewing machine and you just want to make sure you tie the ends I do it like three or four times just because I want to make sure that it does not and you want to repeat those steps for each of the holes Now that we're all done and we have the headband sewn onto it, you do notice that the bottom is a little bit flappy. So I just took a little bit of the hot glue and just put at the bottom just so it wouldn't flap all over the place. Now you want to make sure that you sew your ends because we did cut them open. And like I said, this headband is kind of tight. It doesn't stretch as much as the first one that I used. So I'm going to take the ends and I'm just going to sew them together right here. I'm just going to take that curved needle and just sew the ends. You want to leave a little pocket open so that way you can put an elastic piece to it, which I'll show you in a second. And now that we've got those ends sewn, I'm just going to take a piece of elastic. This was an elastic headband and a bobby pin. And I'm just going to put that through the bobby pin, you know, just like how you see my bobby pin and I'm going to take it first from the bottom portion and then overlap it and then you can go ahead and tie it in the back. 
But before we tie it, we want to make sure that we have our foam down. So you just want to repeat the same steps once again with the foam and your hot glue. Now, unfortunately, I didn't have any more black tape, so you guys get the gist, but make sure you do put your, your duct tape on the foam. But I didn't have any more, and like I said, the packaging tape doesn't work that great. I mean, not for me, but you guys can give it a try. And I went ahead and trimmed the edges off because, like I said, it was a little bit too long, and also cut the curved piece in. And now I'm just going to be using some black ribbon for my trimming of this face mask, or this face shield. And you just want to go ahead and keep repeating the same process. And now just to make the front portion look a little bit more fancier, I'm just going to take that same black ribbon and place it over the trimming of the headband. And I'm going to hot glue that down as well. And you just want to hot glue that across. Try not to put it too close to the edges of the actual headband because the hot glue will spill over. And if you want to add a little bit of decor to it, then you can do so like this. All right, you guys, so we're done with the face mask. Um, this is the one that I used the sewing machine on. And then the red and black one is just the one, if you don't have a sewing machine, you can make it like that. You can still add your gems or blinged out stuff, whatever you want to add to it. Just make sure that you use a hole puncher and tape over it. And then you can sew it on. But this one right here came out really cute. I like the color concept and it's really easy to put on. It's just a basic headband that I got from the Dollar Tree and that's about it. You can pull it down as far as you want just for extra protection if you want it longer. But a face shield so that way, you know, during this COVID-19 you can still be fashionable, cute, and safe at the same time. But please make sure to wear your mask underneath. That's always like beneficial. So I love you guys. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Let me know your thoughts below. If you decide to make this project, let me know. Tag me in a picture on Instagram or what have you. Or if you decide to make a video, make sure you leave all of the information down below so that way I can watch. And on that note, I'll see you guys in a soon to come video. Make sure you rate, comment, and share the video. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Get them, spin them, but lunch in my shoe and the denim. I put the rockets on them. Big bands can't bend them. Ops, we hit them. Fuck them off, we bend them.